For 70 years, we've lived in the shadows of the Great War. A war that destroyed Earth and forced humanity into the cold void of space. For 70 years, we have waited for the evac extract genre to become popular. It is finally happening. With Escape from Tarkov paving the way for more devs to give this genre a real go, we are getting some awesome games coming out this year and in the future. One of those games is Marauders, a diesel punk evac shooter that merges the fun of boarding and stealing ships from Sea of Thieves with the intense tactical FPS gameplay of Escape from Tarkov, all the while knowing that if you die, you lose it all. I, for one, am very happy this genre is picking up steam, and I'm here today to give you all the information you need to get started in Marauders. Let's go over the main menu. You will be spending a lot of time here in between your raids, so it's important to know what you're looking at. At the top of your screen, you will have a list of tabs. The very first one being where you launch your raid or you find your friends to play with. You can have a party up to four players or you can use the server browser to find other players to play with. Gear. This is where you hoard your precious loot. <clears throat> I mean, get ready for the next raid. Equip your gear and prepare for the next mission. You can store loot inside of bags and craft boxes to expand your storage as well. Crafting. Each recipe unlocks at a certain level, and then you need skill points and money to purchase the recipe. You get skill points and money from doing raids and leveling up. There are many different types of recipes in here, from weapon attachments, ammo, ships that you can craft, and gear and weapons. Once purchased, you can craft multiple things at the same time, as long as you have the materials for them. Definitely focus on getting lot picks, meds, boxes, and bags. This way, you will always have everything you need to go into a raid. Also on the crafting tab, you can quickly dismantle items. Each item has different materials that it can produce. Each material that the item can produce has a different percentage at which it can spawn. So be sure to look at the percentages before you scrap it to make sure it's worth doing. You then have trade. Each faction has its own shop. The higher the faction level, the better the items in the shop and the cheaper things are. You upgrade the faction by doing contracts. The shop changes every 15 minutes to a different faction. Be sure to stock up on ammo of your favorite gun when it's available. You can also use this to quickly get crafting materials by buying armor or helmets that you don't want and scrapping them. Appearance. Unlike many games nowadays, this game has cosmetic progression that you can unlock by playing. No microtransactions here. All these cosmetics will have different requirements for unlock and allow you to show off your skill based on what you have on. Contracts. You will have daily contracts that you can do. They refresh each day and will reward you with XP, items, and money. You also have a main campaign that rewards you with the same stuff along with cosmetics. This is your form of long term progression and will carry you until the max level of the game. Weapon Armory. This is where you can see your weapons that you have in your bank. You can add attachments to them and also see the specific stats for each weapon. When you add an attachment, the stats will also change. Lastly, the hangar. This is your hangar for your ships. You can store up to three ships and a rust bucket. You can also use this screen to attach upgrades to your ships and see their stats. Once you've selected some contracts, crafted or purchased some gear and weapons, and got your biscuits out of the oven, you can deploy into a raid. Now at the beginning of the raid is where this game really differs from other games in the genre. Once in a lobby, you are placed into a spaceship. This spaceship is your home while you're in the outer space portion of a raid. You and your friends can fly around the spaceship, shoot its guns at other players, and even use escape pods to board other player ships, kill them, and then steal their ship. The space portion of this game really gives you the feel of Sea of Thieves. But you have multiple play styles here. You can either rush to the raid in the center of the map where the main FPS takes place, try to win dogfights against other ships, attack boss AI ships that hold valuable loot, or be sneaky and use your escape pod to board players going into and leaving the raid to steal their loot. At first, you start off with what's called a rust bucket. This ship doesn't have any special guns, storage, or a diverse layout. You will always have a rust bucket, so no need to worry about leaving it behind when you need to get out of a raid quickly. But you can move on to crafting better ships with different stats. Some move really fast, some are big tanks that can take a lot of damage, and some are massive in size that create a labyrinth for your enemies to traverse when they're trying to steal your ship. The ships other than the rust bucket can also be upgraded with weapons such as torpedoes, flat cannons, or even a nuclear bomb. Also, all of the ships that aren't the rust bucket come with extra storage, so you can store extra loot from a raid other than in your backpack. For instance, I use this to double up on a run, where my backpack becomes full, so I run back to my ship, drop everything off, then go back into the raid to get more loot. One thing to be careful about when using a special ship other than the rust bucket is that you will lose your ship if you die or if you don't escape with it. So while a rust bucket is easy to leave behind, a custom ship is not. Also, if you kill someone, check their captain's key card. It will say what type of ship they have, if it's anything other than the rust bucket, you can find their dock in the raid, open it up, and now their ship is yours, along with all of their loot. This is by far one of the coolest parts of this game. 
and I wouldn't blame you if you spent all of your time in space fighting each other and boarding others. One tip here is to be sure to learn where people can board you. Based on the ships that you have, there are different boarding spots where enemy players can spawn in. If you're being boarded, you will get an alert saying so. Hurry up, get off the controls, and rush to the spawn points of the enemy, and you might be able to catch them off guard and kill them while saying thanks for the free loot. So once you've had a little bit of fun in outer space, you move into the center of the map, which is the main raid. Each has its own layout, AI, and points of interest to check out. This part of the game is more familiar, but unlike Tarkov, it is not a simulation. This game feels like a video game. You won't be worried about being overweight or coming around a corner too fast and now you're dizzy. This game is a lot more simple. You can have up to three weapons, one being a sidearm. All the weapons in the game use iron sights and are from the World War I era of weapons. So you won't be getting into anything too crazy. Mainly the fighting is about headshots and movement. You can lean around corners, run quickly, jump into the air to turn faster, and then land some good shots on the enemy to win. This video won't go too far into the differences between weapons, but I'll highlight them quickly here. Shotguns are dumb up close, stick it into the belly of somebody, and they are dead. SMGs are good at hip fire, but are surprisingly good at ADS as well. Assault rifles are the all-around weapon and have some of the quickest time to kills. Rifles are difficult to use, but headshots are basically one hits. LMGs are ridiculous, I've never been able to get one to work, but you basically have unlimited ammo. Then you have a flamethrower, and you can do things like this. <laughs> Other than that, you do have a melee slot, which is very strong, and if you get close enough, can win you some fights. You also have utilities such as grenades, flashbangs, and smokes. Overall, I suggest using an Uzi when you first start, and it's my favorite gun at the moment, and it has won me many fights. It's by far the most stable NSMG, and the ammo is cheap and easy to come by. Along with the silencer being a very early unlock in the crafting tab, you can have an entire kitted weapon early on. Other than that, my favorite rifle is the M16. It's a single fire that taps heads like a dream. While in the FPS raid, you have two main meters to manage. That's it, nice and simple. Your health, which can be replenished by food, water, bandages, and med kits, and your stamina that can be replenished by food and water. Now your stamina does fill up over time, but there will be a cap reducer in place. The more you sprint around in ADS, the more stamina you use, and thus this lowers your cap. To remove this limiter, drink some water or eat some food, and your stamina will fill up to 100%. Health works a little bit differently. The more damage you take, the lower your cap goes. So if you get into a lot of fights, you will see that your max health is no longer 100. The only thing that can remove that white part of your health bar is morphine and aspirin. Basically medical items that aren't normal health remove this white part. Then you can use a normal med item to get your health back up to 100. When I know I'm about to get into a fight, I top off my stamina and health the best I can and I'm in the fight, quick and easy. While in the raid, you will come across AI. These AI are all types of messed up. They're either dumb as rocks, suicidal maniacs, or insane one-shot hackers. All in all, they are, aren't too difficult once you know how to fight them, but the real issue with them is that it gives away your position when you do fight them. If you hear shooting, you know it's another player. AI won't shoot at AI, so you can rush that spot and try to catch the enemy player off guard, either reloading or healing. AI when killed drops different things depending on the type it is. There are grunts that just have a melee weapon, all the way up to the commandos that have full set of high tier armor and a gun that uses 7.62 ammo. AI are a great way to get geared and honestly good practice before a PvP fight. There are five maps currently in the game. Each map has its own unique layout and aesthetic, but mostly they are all tight corners and corridors. Learning the map layout is a big skill gap and will help you win most fights just by knowing how to move around them properly. Audio in this game has improved drastically over time, so be sure to use your ears and hear the enemy first before getting into a fight. I win many fights just due to the fact that I heard the enemy first. So the PvP, that's the fun part in a raid, right? That's the good stuff. Yes, yes it is. The PvP is a blast and your heart will be pumping like crazy. When you kill someone, you get everything. There is no safe pockets. It's thrilling winning a fight against a player and getting all of their loot. My biggest tip here is headshots. Just aim for the head. Also, don't be afraid to sprint at somebody when you know they're reloading to catch them off guard. When you kill someone, you can get their key card, like mentioned before. This is used to open up their enemy docks to steal their ship. Other than that, key cards can be sold for money, or you can hoard them in your bank as a collection. I may collect them. It's not weird, I promise. It's, it's like Pokemon. I just happen to have shot the dude in the head to get it. Also, not all players will have a key card. If they aren't the captain of the ship, they won't. The captain of the ship is normally the one that creates the party in the main lobby. So in PvP, just try to kill everybody. Simple. The other things to look out for when in PvP is the type of armor the person is wearing. Luckily, all the armor is visibly different. The level of it can be seen in the UI, and it helps you know what you're up against. For instance, if you're using an SMG and the dude you're fighting has a level 9 red panzer armor, you aren't going to do very well shooting him in the chest. This is why I say headshots are king. Because while helmets also have armor, most of them don't cover the person's face. Basically, aim for in between the eyes and you'll be a okay. You might notice after you kill an AI or a player that you can't take their bag or put it inside your own. This is because the game doesn't allow for bag stacking. But you can right click, 
fold the bag, and then put it inside. Folding it doesn't make it take less space. It just makes it so it can't be used to store items, thus allowing you to put it into your backpack. Some other quick tips for PvP and AI fighting. When using meds or food, you can right click them to use or drag and drop them onto the left side where your character outline is. There will be an animation that happens removing your gun until it is done. So be careful because you are defenseless during this. There does seem to be a way to prevent this animation though, but I can't get it down pat. I think it has something to do with ADSing and then opening your inventory and using an item. That may just be a bug, so I wouldn't count on it. Don't forget about melee. If you run out of bullets, swap to your melee quickly, you should be able to get a swipe off before they can reload. Melee is really strong. Some melee weapons straight up one-shotting and will get you out of a pinch. Same goes for sidearms, but sidearms aren't nearly as fun as a melee weapon. Don't overhold your ADS. Sitting and holding a corner might seem strong, but once you drain all your stamina, because you're ADSing, you start panting, making a lot of noise. Your aim becomes a little bit shaky. And in like most multiplayer shooters, peak or advantage is a thing. So most of the time being aggressive will win you a fight. If you can't hear them, don't push them. Like I said before, sound is what gives you an advantage. Try to have that advantage on your side. Lastly, how do you know it's a player or an AI you're fighting? Well, there's a few ways. Mainly it's movement and leaning. AI doesn't move too smart and they don't lean often. Also, if you hear voice lines being yelled out, that is a player hitting an F key to talk shit. A player will also have a key card like mentioned before, but the main way to know is the sound someone makes when you kill them. If it's an AI, it will be a short, quick grunt. If it's a player, it'll be long and dramatic like the dude just stepped on a Lego or something. Other than killing AI and players, what is there to do in a raid? Well, there's a lot of good loot to be gotten. Be sure to always bring at least two lock picks. The best loot is behind locked doors, safes, and in yellow bins. Most items can be used in crafting or are worth a lot of money. I will be making a guide on the best money runs for each map going forward. So be sure to subscribe to see those videos when they come out. You'll also be completing the majority of your contracts while in a raid. So learn the layouts, learn the rooms, pay attention to things that kind of stand out because most likely it has something to do with a contract. All right, so you killed a bunch of players, you have a bunch of loot, what now? Keep in mind the timer. Every time you go into a raid, you have an oxygen timer. This will determine how long you can stay in the raid. If it's under 10 minutes, the countdown will be at the top of your screen. You will learn how long it takes to get out of a raid after a while. I wouldn't push it past three minutes left to be safe. And that's without knowing where your ship is. If you don't know where you parked your ship, which happens a lot, you will be able to use escape pods on the map. Look for a red light above a door or a hallway. Follow that light until you come to an escape pod on a wall. Jump in it and blast off. Keep in mind, you are now not able to get your ship back if you do this. Then once you are back out in space, look for a giant warp drive looking thing. This has a big yellow glowing hole in it. Fly into the hole and the raid is over. Again, be careful though. Some people might be waiting for you as you come out of the raid to try to take all your loot. At the end, you will be able to see how many players you killed, those being called Marauders, and the AI you killed as well. You will also receive XP based on your loot value and kills. The XP is used to level up your account, which then unlocks more crafting recipes, so you can rely more on crafting the higher level you are. Now that you're out of the raid, organize your loot any way you like. Sell all your coins and bonds and any other money items and hoard all the rest of your stuff. Go over to the contracts tab and complete any contracts you did, along with picking up some new ones. One thing also to point out is that you can prestige your account. What this does is give you control over your wipe. This is a common discussion in this genre. Most of the time games in this genre will have a wipe putting people on an even playing field. Well, this game allows you to do it yourself and rewards you for doing so. Once you reach max level, you can prestige, restarting your progression, but rewarding you a prestige token. This token can be used to expand your inventory or unlock cool cosmetics. Overall, this game is a lot of fun. I sit down to play and forget the time. It's very addicting and keeps you engaged throughout. There are some bugs and issues with the game being in early access, but I think the game has legs. And if you're interested in this genre, you won't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this video, come watch me live over on Twitch. My link will be in the comments down below. Until the next video, peace and love, everybody. Peace and love.